man can follow where God's enemies glide through the fog. That is a line from Beowulf. And who are God's enemies? According to Beowulf, one of the main enemies of God is Grendel. So on today's Monsterology, we will be looking at the monster Grendel, making some interesting images and learning the story from Beowulf. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, here's the sort of scariest version of the monster that I did. And uh, you'll stay tuned. I'm going to do sort of a cute version of Grendel as well. This poor, <laughs> this poor sod is my sort of ogre version of uh, Grendel. He's got scaly skin as Grendel is supposed to. And here he's killed somebody who's clearly dead in that cartoon face. Uh, but uh, I started drawing the hero himself, Beowulf. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the story. Some of you will know it, some of it, some of you will be unfamiliar. This is sort of my drawing of uh, the hero of this classic uh, epic poem, Beowulf. And here he is fighting Grendel, sort of crawling around on his shoulder and Grendel is trying to grab him. I'm doing this drawing in the digital form and so I'm gonna show you some of those techniques as we go along here. It's a fascinating story. I'm happy with the, this drawing in a way because uh, it's hard to get the dynamism of characters right. And I want to sort of avoid the classic comic book style, uh, but also I've got to get sort of heroes and monsters battling each other. So it, it's almost inevitable that it has some comic book quality to it. I'm trying to search for something in between comic book style and something rough and ugly almost um, conveying some of the drama of fine art, you know, and the emotional aspects. So that's what I'm going for here. And I'm working on the, the iPad uh, using uh, the Apple Pencil and uh, a program called Procreate, which I really like. It, it gives you really the feeling of drawing and you can build up layers. The story of, of uh, Grendel is interesting because something happens when you get to this monster story that's different from the ancient monsters. Ancient monsters, you would have somebody like, you know, Odysseus fighting Polyphemus, the Cyclops. And the Cyclops is out to get him and is monstrous in that sense. But he's not like a, an evil enemy of God. Uh, he's just a different being who, who, you know, wants to eat human beings. When you get to Grendel, there's an interesting line in the original Beowulf um, poem which says that Grendel is actually the spawn of Cain or a descendant or kinfolk of Cain. And you remember Cain and Abel are the, the children of uh, Adam and Eve. Cain, he kills his brother uh, Abel because they both make sacrifices to Yahweh and Abel's sacrifice uh, of meat or blood is accepted and Cain's sacrifice is rejected and so out of jealousy Cain kills Abel. So in the medieval period monsters were oftentimes tied to Cain. And here's the final drawing which I, I really think turned out nicely. It is, to me, it, it seems pretty frightening to make the ghoul sort of have this color and also the, the quality of the lines are sort of really broken up and disturbing. And then I thought, well, after seeing something horrifying, one needs uh, unicorns and puppy dogs. And so I thought, I'll try to do a cute version of Grendel. And what happens in the story is basically Grendel is uh, harassing this uh, Danish village. And this guy comes from uh, another part of Scandinavia. And he's our hero, Beowulf. And he says, I'll stop Grendel from killing and eating you all. And he. He realizes at, at right away that uh, swords and knives and arrows don't, don't work on this creature, so he decides to use his bare hands. And it turns out Beowulf is extremely strong, and in the struggle with the creature, he actually rips Grendel's arm off uh, with his bare hands. And this uh, sends Grendel howling and ru running into the night uh, with his arm ripped off. So I thought it might be kind of uh, humorous to do cute Grendel here with his arm off. Kind of a classic monster story, but there are some features of this that, that really are a little different. For example, Tolkien was fascinated, J.R.R. Tolkien was fascinated by Beowulf, and he said, um, people think it's just a stupid monster story, 
but in fact there's some depth here that can only come through in the language itself. And uh, Tolkien said uh, the actual poetry of Beowulf was powerful stuff and it was haunting and eerie on a line-by-line -line basis and emotionally edifying when taken as a whole narrative. In a passage that unknowingly augurs his own importance as an inspiring writer of monster fantasies, Tolkien defended Beowulf and its quote-unquote low monsters. He says, quote, the dragon in legend is a potent creation of men's imagination. Even today, despite the critics, you may find men not ignorant of tragic legend and history who have heard of heroes and indeed seen them, who yet have been caught by the fascination of the worm. More than one poem in recent years has been inspired by the dragon of Beowulf." End quote. And Tolkien says this um, in, a, uh, in an article just before he himself releases The Hobbit and begins sort of his own cottage industry of thrilling tales. I suppose for me the thing that's really interesting about this story is it, the way that it changes uh, the nature of monsters and t turns them into sort of a problem of evil. Uh, in the ancient world you had many gods fighting and so it's common for monsters to be fighting on the side of one god against another god. But in the medieval world, you have monotheism. You have the god of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And he's supposed to be all-powerful, all-good, all-knowing. Why is God letting monsters run around, torture and maim and hurting people? It becomes a, a classic permutation of the problem of evil. Why does God allow evil? If, is he too weak? Well, that doesn't make sense. He's supposed to be all-powerful. Does he not know what's going on? That doesn't make sense. He's supposed to know everything. So it was frequently thought that the way to resolve the problem of monsters with a monotheistic god was make the monsters sort of God's henchmen, or they're basically doing the dirty work for God. Uh, here I'm doing um, obviously a, a sort of pen and ink drawing of this creature, and then I've laid in a lot of cross hatching, which I really like. And then I will put some washes of ink over it to, to let the central character of uh, Grendel pop out more from the background. And I like the way that's looking against this light brown blonde color. And then you can see when I lay in this white as a kind of accent to the eyes, uh, it really pops the white and you get sort of a fun cartoony quality here. So here's Grendel then uh, upset that he's had his arm r ripped off. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's the final drawing. And so we've had some horrible uh, Grendel and we've had a cute Grendel who's been persecuted by the, in a sense, the monstrous hero, in this case, Beowulf. And that's sort of the way the Grendel story has been told in the 20th century. So that's it. That's Grendel. And I hope you read the original Beowulf. And of course, click subscribe and come back for more on Monsterology. See you next time.